Shooting, shooting, shooting. Still misfire, slap, repel, observe. I need, I need you to load and test fire my two or three. Load, clean, clear, and drop fire, fire, fire. And then the last time, make sure this doesn't slide off. Make sure it locks on. I need you to test fire. Oh, excuse me. Test, test fire. fire. Uh, test fire. Keep my hand underneath the feed, making sure I catch around and it doesn't drop. Today is the second day of EIB validation. Yesterday they, they did a PT test and a day and night land nav, and today is the first day of individual lanes training. The expert infantryman badge is an elite, an elite award to attain, and it's very difficult. So we have a daily failure rate of about 60%, sometimes more depending on the event, and overall, overall sometimes only 20% that go out for the award will receive it. Well, helping each other, like starting out just from day one, we did a round robin training last week. We all motivated each other, helped each other out, answered any questions. You have some people that are subject matter experts in certain areas, so we had to come together as a team. And then when it came to validation day, when you're out on the lane, you're all by yourself. When you're back here mentally prepping, your battle buddies are sitting there. They're helping you mentally get focused, answering any questions you have. We're all feeding off of each other, you know. But once you get down on the lane, it's, you're all by yourself. That's when you really have to make your pay. During the final mile, I was thinking to myself, wow, I'm making pretty good time. <laughs> Can't wait to be done because I really don't like this. <laughs> Real marches are tough, but something I'm good at, so. Some of my goals, well obviously I plan on staying in the military for quite some time. Uh, as long as I can, I'll probably be in the Minnesota National Guard, leading troops and uh, taking on anything that I can. Now I just got to find something new to challenge myself, so some good stuff. Well, number one thing, I've been born and raised in Minnesota. My family's all from Minnesota, and when it comes down to it, we're probably one of the best brigades out there, especially for the National Guard. It means everything to me. I mean, it means that I'm not only an infantryman, but I'm one of the best infantrymen out there. It means everything. I love it. Today is day one of lanes testing for the candidates. Um, it's day two of the EIB testing overall. Um, day one consisted of the APFT and then day and night land nav. 
Yeah, so at the individual soldier level and some of the units, they started training for EIB a couple of weeks ago. Um, last week was our first organized training where we had stations set up that had all of the tasks that they would, be, they would encounter on these lanes um, set up on Camp Bering where the soldier could meet with a grader and go through those tasks. So there's three days of lanes. There's three lanes. There's a, an urban lane, a patrol lane, and a traffic control point or TCP lane. Um, so the three days, so day two, day three, and day four are those lanes. Um, each candidate will do one lane per day providing they're still in competition for the EIB. And then day five consists of a 12 mile foot march and then the wardy ceremony afterwards for the, those that make it through all the, all the tasks. Can you the Guard typically does not conduct expert infantry badge testing because it's very time consuming and time intensive, labor intensive. Um, it takes, uh, again, it's, it's a minimum of a two week requirement. Uh, 12 days is what the, F, or the, the pamphlet says you get to do EIB. You have five days of the round robin or the practice days and then five days of testing with a couple days in between for, for preparation. So for, in order for a guard unit to be able to do that, it would either take up an entire annual training period or you'd have to make an additional allotment for that. So it's worked out well for us to be able to do these on deployments. Um, on active duty, it's just part of your training cycle for that year. So we've been lucky to do it every four years uh, since 2004 for my battalion, 2nd and 135th. Um, so it's, we've been very fortunate. It actually means a lot to be able to offer this for soldiers to go through. It, it hones a great skill level one task that all infantrymen should be experts at. And, and to allow soldiers to earn uh, the coveted expert infantryman's badge, which is only worn by a, a, you know, probably less than 10% of all infantrymen in the Army today, it, it's something that people can, um, can be proud of and can say they really accomplished something and that they are a true expert infantryman. There's a, there's a lot of worried, you look, at, look on the candidates' faces and there's, before they start the lane, and, and they're pretty serious, they're, they're nervous, they want to make sure they do a good job. Um, so but it's exciting to see them come off the lane with that go, and it's kind of the relief. They kind of say, they kind of exhale, like, oh, I got through one, only to remember that, hey, I have two more days plus a 12 more road march left. Sure, so today is our first day of uh, testing on the lanes. Uh, so we have roughly about 30 candidates that are coming through today uh, being taught, uh, tested on various infantry skills uh, to try to make it through the first day to follow on on the second and third day of testing. Since I was at OIC, we kind of came up with a concept based on some of the ARs and the pamphlets that are out there on the EIB uh, testing protocol. So we, we put that all together in a package, um, kind of resourced some of our graders and our testers uh, as well as the resources we needed for the lane. Uh, I've done a couple of rehearsals over the last few weeks to, to get us all squared away. Uh, I'd probably say each individual person uh, has put in roughly between 35 to, to 80 hours depending on how involved you are uh, with the process. From my knowledge, we've always had uh, EIB as a, an end state uh, for the deployment here to Kuwait. Uh, it's been a matter of time trying to get it lined up and some different resources approved from Fort Benning, who's the proponent of the EIB. Uh, once we get it on the schedule, though, it's come together very, very quickly. So the last time we ran uh, an EIB testing uh, was in 2008 uh, in Camp Bonsteel in Kosovo. So 2135 had deployed there for roughly about a year, and just before we left, we did uh, another round of EIB testing. The format really has changed over the years. Um, it's become much more modern. The old format was based upon a, a pre-designated number of stations, 30 to 35 stations, uh, that you really went to during the test week and individually tested on, on each, uh, each event. Uh, now it's changed to a lanes concept where we have uh, lanes that soldiers run through that generally comprise of anywhere from 8 to 12 tasks. Uh, those tasks are done uh, in 20 to 25 minutes, so uh, the pressure is a lot higher on the soldier. Uh, they go through the tasks. They're given a little more latitude as far as their, their no goes, um, but overall we're hoping that the uh, percentages of soldiers who make it through uh, are roughly about the same. So the current fail rate that we have for the APFT is 52%. Uh, so coming out of the, the, first, the first week, uh, we had roughly around 294 candidates that uh, we're going to show up for the APFT. Uh, of that, we had 142 that passed, uh, passed the APFT fully and made it to the land navigation. So uh, lost a couple more percentage points over the land navigation, and we showed up with uh, 104 soldiers testing this morning.